Alrighty guys and welcome back. We're gonna be having another look at a Dead by Daylight killer. This is the first killer that was ever released in Dead by Daylight, also known as the Trapper. Now the Trapper is a little bit of a hidden gem. He has the ability to completely snowball the game. So let's have a little bit of a finer print look at him. The Trapper starts the trial holding one bear trap in a hand, followed by a machete or a customizable weapon in his opposite hand. His special ability is he can place a bear trap on the ground almost wherever he deems necessary, whether that be in between a pallet, at a pallet, at a jungle gym, there's only a few restricted areas he cannot place, such as middle of a staircase going up or down, and near a hook, there is a little bit of an area where he has to place further back. Now, that being said, the trapper will have a variety of traps spread out throughout the entire board. He can start with multiple bear traps. There are quite a few add-ons to allow him to start with more to darken the color of the bear traps alongside to give them special abilities and effects, such as mangled, and survivors can down themselves when they free themselves from bear traps, or it's harder to uh, free yourself, period. Now, this being said, guys, what makes the Trapper so strong and a good killer? The ability to immobilize and injure trapped targets or victims throughout the acquire board. Now, the Trapper's main job is exactly what you think it is. It is to prep the board or the battlefield for you to be able to come back for the mid to late game and snowball the game and possibly eliminate the team. Now, on my build, you will see four stall slash regression perks. Now, there are a couple of ways you can build Trapper. Trapper, and the choice is yours. That came right out of Morrowind, if anyone's ever played Morrowind. Alright, that being said, this is a build based on the fact that it's a rank 1 build. Yes, I can see in the top right hand corner I'm rank 11. Rank reset did just happen. But that being said, let's get straight into it. Now, the first perk is a staple on a lot of killers. Now, I highly recommend this on a few killers. Those few killers being the Trapper, the Hag. They are the god tier ones, in my opinion, that Ruin is very crucial on. Hag can get away without it with Devour Hope and Horn of Ground. Don't get me wrong, but you're going to have to be really a veteran understanding Hag, Animation Lock, etc. But we'll be talking about that in a different section or video. So having a look here, Ruin. What does Ruin do? Basically, a survivor has to land a small great skill check to get no productivity towards the generator. If he lands the good section, there's a 5% penalty regression of what is already completed at the generator. Now, it takes 80 seconds to do a Jenny against Ruin, providing you're landing every great. So if you've got it all the way up to 79 seconds, and at the last second you land it good, you're losing 5%. 5% at 80 is 4. Therefore, you're losing 4 seconds. That also being said, all productivity is stalled on the generator for approximately 1.5 seconds. Therefore, for anyone else working on it, might miss a skill check too, it might stall, it can really hurt generators when there's multiple people working on it. And the whole build here for Trapper is based on, I'm going to stall the game while I prep the game, and I'm going to come back for the mid to late game. So that is what Ruin does. It also appears on a totem, which killers uh, has to sort of protect to a degree, but at the same time, survivors can break the totem and then remove the buff from the killer or the debuff from the survivors altogether for the rest of the trial. Now, the next one is my favorite perk in Death by daylight, you all know, it is called Pop Goes the Weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel allows me to pick up a downed target, hook them, and then kick a generator. Kicking the generator, it will suffer 25% penalty to what has been completed of the generator too. Therefore, if the generator is almost done at 80 seconds, you kick it, it's going to go flying back. You got 8, 16, 20 seconds right off a generator because you kicked it. Now, if you kicked a Jenny and you had Ruin, that's really going to hurt the generator's productivity. Okay, moving on to the next perk as well, Thrilling tremor when you picked up a down target. Now keep in mind, if the survivor steps in your bear trap and they're already injured, you can press the spacebar key and pull them out rather than hitting him, picking him up out of the ground. However, if you have perks like save the best for last, you can hit a survivor in a trap who has not been put into dying state to get a token. You can only do it once though, you can't do it multiple times and then you can pick him up out of the bear trap or he might just fall out onto the ground and you pick him up through that as well. Thrilling tremor allows you to pick up a down target or pick a target out of a locker. While you do the animation for picking somebody out of a locker, do keep in mind, when you put your sword aside or put your machete aside and you grab them to throw them over your shoulder, until they reach over your shoulder, Thrilling Tremors will not activate. It does not activate instantly. When picking a survivor up from dying state on the ground, the second you hit the spacebar key and you bend down, 
the generators will seal. Now, Thrilling Tremor is very powerful. It is a substitute to barbecue and chili. In my opinion, it is a rich man's barbecue and chili. This seals all generators that people are not currently working on. Now, barbecue would give you situation awareness. Now, keep in mind, the trapper's job is in the title. He is a trapper. His job isn't a hunter. He's not meant to be looking for survivors to kill. I mean, sometimes you get a map like Larry's Institute and that's how you play it out. Other times you need to be looking towards the prep of the board of the game. Now, if I pick somebody out of the trap, and then I hook him on a generator and I see one generator that's not glowing white, that means there's survivors on that. Possibly multiple survivors because all the other generators aren't being worked on. There could be a guy in a locker. There could be a guy breaking a totem. Could be a guy close. Could be a guy in the basement. I don't know. What do I know? Somebody is working on a generator across the board. Therefore, I'm going to need a path in that direction. Giving me the highest probability of getting Pop Goes the Weasel regression out. Much like the Wombo Combo, Pop Goes the Weasel, and Discordance, also known as one of the most powerful combos in the game, Thrilling Tremor works perfectly with Surge. Now, what does Surge do? Surge is basically one of the god-tier perks that I don't have in my build here. It is a hidden gem that a lot of people over... over, um think it's a really, really bad perk, but at the same time, if you incorporate it well on killers that are M1 killers, it can work phenomenally good. So what does Surge do? When you down a survivor with an M1, yes, if he is stuck in a bear trap and trying to free himself, if you M1 him, all generators within 32 meters will explode going back 8%. It can only happen once every 40 seconds. It can hit four generators if you're on a map like uh, the game. It can hit one generator if you're on a map like the temple. Generally, you'll still tip two generators almost on any map this being said why is surge highly rated in my books okay downing a survivor all generators will explode for eight percent that forces a survivor to release themselves from the generator okay they might just jump straight back on it they might not if you have something like save the best for last you recover 40 percent quicker right they might not have enough time to jump back on the jenny then you press space bar now the generator has been regressed by eight percent and it's going to be regressing approximately one 1.5 percent per second for the next 16 seconds seconds. It's not looking so bad now, isn't it? You have just picked that guy up. You've made it go back 8%. On top of that, you're making it go back. Let's just round it down to 1% per second. So that's 8 plus 16. You're now making the generator go back a whopping 24% for a generator you haven't even touched. You haven't even kicked the generator. You just jammed down Jeff and picked him up. Now three generators around are all going to go back 24%. Now look at Pop Goes the Weasel. That makes it go back 25%. So running the combo of Thrilling Tremor and Surge is going to give you that powerhouse regression. Now you'll see I don't have it on my Trapper. I do highly recommend it on weaker killers that don't have that kill potential, that pressure, that downing with a chainsaw on the billy, downing on Leatherface. I recommend it on people such as the pig. The pig lacks lust is the down, and she's all about the pause and the regression. It can be devastating on her. The clown. You can mind game at pallets and hit somebody down. The clown needs all the help he gets. You can go a lethal clown with horn and ground, devour hope, thrilling tremor, pop. You can go a stall clown with ruin, pop, thrilling tremor, surge. I'm not going to talk about the clown because we're here to talk about the trapper. But even that powerhouse combo with surge could be put somewhere in this build. I highly recommend keeping ruin. You could substitute pop for surge. It's going to allow you to get more more time focused on the traps. I don't like doing that. I really think pop is a god tier perk and it has saved my ass in a lot of games many, many times. But that is just a really powerhouse combo that not many people think about, not people, many people know. Surge also does work with perks like surveillance. So if you are playing Ghostface and you down a guy, all Jennies will be glowing white and regressing. Jennings not glowing white, you use your special ability, you lose your heartbeat, you come around the corner and get the other guy. So it can be pretty decent, don't get me wrong. But that is just a really powerhouse combo to look at. Now my third or my fourth and final perk is Corrupt Intervention. Corrupt Intervention will seal three generators the furthest away from me at spawn. On maps like the game, it's not going to do map uh, do much. On maps like Hattonfield and the Temple, it's going to seal Hattonfield houses. It's going to really, really help me in terms of getting time to prep the entire board. It is a bit of a gamble running Corrupt Intervention and Ruin. That being said, survivors could spawn at a Jenny that they can't work at, come into the map, find Ruin and break it. But it is a risk that I'm willing to take. I have 120 seconds to get three, four, five bear traps out, or two to three hits, or some good pallets. I need to do something in that 120 seconds, then I lose the, uh, the perk altogether. You could substitute it for Surge. However, I like to force people that up spawn in the skirt of the map to come into the map. Some people are really good at landing Ruin. Some people are really bad at landing Ruin. Some people split up against Ruin. I personally prefer to split up. So instead of you spawning in the far 
west side of the map past the water tower, I want you to come into the board. You might see a dull totem and break it there. That stalled you for 20, 30 seconds while you're coming into the map because you don't know what the killer is. How many trappers run corrupt intervention? You might think it's a, a, a plague or something along those lines. So... All in all, I see this personally as being one of the best, if not the best build, for a rank 1 trapper that is choosing to use no add-ons. Now, the build is subject to change based on a couple of factors. I do want to mention some things that are very highly important. Now... I don't recommend save the best for last on the trapper. I did think it wasn't too bad during a period of time, and I was correct. It wasn't too bad during a period of time, but now that you can heal in lockers, it becomes a little bit of a, a little bit of a stale perk. Don't get me wrong. Alternatively, if you want to be able to be that M1 warrior, you can go save the best for last rather than sloppy butcher. Save the best for last, once you start building stacks, can allow you to go for hook trades, can allow you to hit a survivor, but more often than not, I do not want save the best for last, because I'm going to lunge hit a guy through a pallet, through a window, and if I lunge hit him through a pallet, he's going to pallet stun me, and I have nothing to speed up pallet recovery. Therefore, the 40% recovery time from save the best for last goes down the drain for my kind of playstyle. If I was running Spirits through Enduring, you wouldn't need save the best for last, because you lunge through, you hit, the pallet breaks, you instantly recover, you go through and get another hit. If you're running save the best for last, and brutal still to the degree unless you hit and pull back and then brutal which can happen sometimes it won't happen it very very situational you know you can go save the best for last and enduring then you're kind of countering up on yourself as well so it's an okay perk i'm not going to try and tell you it's a bad perk but i want to give it an honorable mention Make your choice can be devastating as well. Now, personally, if I were to be using add-ons on my trapper, I generally make a little bit of a different build here. Now, you guys may notice a lot of things change, but this just comes down to understanding and rotation. Now, I do like Devour Hope, and I always, always recommend, if you're running Devour Hope, not to run Barbecue and Chili, right? Barbecue and Chili could work decently on people like the Spirit, don't get me wrong, but on people like the Trapper that still have to follow the principles of the game and break the palace and follow survivors and hide your light and go for the lucky hits, I think it is a bit of a dud. So therefore, my second perk I'm actually going to put up here will be Pop Goes the Weasel, but I'm looking into Thrilling Tremor. Thrilling Tremor and Devour Hope works swimmingly. Now, if you remember the clown build I recommended earlier, it was exactly this with Horned Ground on the end. I'm not going to recommend Horned Ground on the end of this build, right? This whole build is about hooking a survivor, getting some form of regression, and then parting throughout the entire map. I could go Surge, but I want to mention a Trapper perk here that a lot of people undermine and don't realize how powerful it is. Agitation. Now, keep in mind, my whole build here is about getting three stacks of Devour Hope as quickly as possible, hooking a guy, rotating away, and then going off of the knowledge that I have been given. Now, keep in mind, pick somebody with habitation. I'm going to be able to get him to the hook quicker. I'm going to be able to see what Jenny's are sealed. I'm going to be able to get over there, and I'm going to be able to hit with Pop Goes the Weasel quicker. A lot of people undermine how powerful agitation is. While carrying a survivor with agitation, you move at the equivalent of 108.5% movement speed. That's going to allow you to hit survivors that try a cute dead hard spin or try and bait you. You're going to be able to follow them and M1 them down. Do keep in mind you cannot lunge in the current situation, though. There are other honorable mentions to be mentioned, too. You could go things like brutal you know but you're meant to be playing smart with your mind games or your prep of your traps now remember i did say i'd run this build based off if i was using add-ons now using add-ons here we're going to be looking along we've got the dark and tar and now there's a couple of options right now i could go the stitched bag to my far left i could go the trapper setting tool i could even go all the way over here to go the trapper sack to carry one extra bear trap now personally i don't care about carrying three, four, five bear traps. I'm more of a kind of man that likes to hurry up and move on. Ideally, the best possible combo for what I'm looking for would be the fastening tools, but I'm going to run down to here. So I'm showing you the cheaper option of what I would recommend. Now, this is going to... You can trade out the tar for this one here, the wood... Uh, the logwood die, but there's a very distinct color difference. I could look at two bear traps and go, that is obviously dark and tar, that is wood, uh, that is the logwood. Alright, so that combo there, it's going to be devastating. You can pretty much place traps in the open and they can't see, allowing you to place, not in doorways, but, you know, running up ramps to the boat. There's going to be a lot of areas where you can catch survivors out like that. You're going to have almost no downtime because you're trapping really fast, but I wouldn't recommend the build if you don't understand the maps fully as trapper. Keep in mind, there is no ruin to stall the game. There's no corrupt intervention to stall the game. This is all based off 
uh, speeding up the game in your favor, okay? As opposed to my last build that I recommended for the rank 1 with no add-ons is all about stalling the game in your favor. This is all about you want your devour hope as quickly as possible. You want to be downing people with M1s. You could trade out Agitation. Don't get me wrong. I really do like Agitation. I've got a soft spot for it. It is still one of my favorite perks in the game. You could put on Surge. You could put on Make Your Choice. You could put on Modern Abuse. There are a lot of options. You could even put on Ruin. I wouldn't recommend. You could also put on Corrupt Intervention if you think it'll work really, really well in your... Uh, in your kind of category, I personally do not. You're not going to be taking too much time by, de you know, kicking generators with overcharge. You don't have to worry about that. You could even go Discord and see if you wanted to know where multiple targets were. Barbecue and Chili could be a substitute to Thrilling Tremor. I wouldn't recommend any of these end perks here either. Nurse's Calling could be an option, but remember, you do have Devour Hope. If you lose Devour Hope, you're going to be in a trouble. But if I had to recommend one other perk for the build other than Agitation, I personally would recommend a perk called Make Your Choice, which is going to allow you to down people um, that have came in for the hook safe. Keep in mind, this means you're going to have to proxy the hook after you're placing prep, and if you're across the board, it's going to hurt. Alternatively, Infectious Fright can get work wonders for a snowball with Devour Hope, or if people choose not to heal against you. Now, guys, that's going to be all for the Trapper. If I had to mention one of my favorite Trapper maps in the game, it would quite easily be Father's Chapel. Now, Father's Chapel is a very, very powerful map. If I had to go to anything, I would be happy with either of these two maps here. You have the Disturbed Ward and Father's Chapel. There is also an offering that you can play for them, which is going to put you in a much better spot. The Jungle Gym is very simplistic. You can prep around the center of the map as well. It's very a hot spot. There's always two to three gens around there. There's always quite a few pallets too, but everyone needs to come to the center the map to rotate through the skirts so keeping in mind if you keep a lot of pressure through there 50% chance the basement's there as well you could really snowball the game very very effectively alrighty guys that's going to be all for the trapper and this is why I put him in the 10th rank for best killer in dead by daylight without add-ons if you have any questions feel free to pop over to the like